Hey everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. Yes, I know, I've got my fair hair going on today. When I wanted fair hair as a kid, I couldn't do it now, now that it's, you know, decades out of style. <laughs> anyway, on to the news. Um, so the Arizona fraud it, it continues. The clown show continues. First, as I mentioned recently, Cyber Ninjas and the Arizona Senate, led by a Republican Trump suck-up Karen Fan, they're still refusing to turn over pertinent documents that would show who's funding this circus. And also contracts, contracts for companies that were hired by Cyber Ninjas, or at least on their behalf. Well, that has resulted in a nonprofit watchdog group filing a complaint in court. And the judge seemed pretty incredulous about the fact that they're trying to hide this information. In a recent hearing on the matter, it was a superior court judge, his name is Michael Kemp. He asked the Senate's lawyer, quote, isn't the public entitled to know who is paying for this? What Senate President Karen Fan referred to as a constitutional and legislative function, this important constitutional duty? Yeah, I mean, she said it. She said this has to do with the Constitution, this has to do with election security, and so that's why the Senate was undertaking this. But the Senate is still arguing that these documents aren't covered under laws that pertain to public records requests. The law seems pretty clear though. It states that officials must maintain records, quote, necessary or appropriate to maintain an accurate knowledge of their official activities and of any of their activities which are supported by monies from the state. So being that the Senate issued subpoenas for these ballots and for the voting machines and the Senate allocated taxpayer money to pay for at least part of this fraud it, they don't really have a legitimate reason for hiding this information. And aren't these the same people who have been thumping their chests and blathering on about transparency in elections? I mean, all of a sudden their audit doesn't have to be transparent. They can keep things secret. Why hide this information if there's nothing nefarious going on? So the good news is that on top of this legal challenge brought by this watchdog group, which will be decided by the way in the next week, so I'll keep you guys posted on it, Democrats in the House of Representatives, U.S. Democrats, have now opened an investigation into the fraud. In addition, the Arizona Republic News Outlet has also filed a complaint with the, the Maricopa County Superior Court asking for financial records and communication records from the Senate and Cyber Ninjas. Now, in regard to the House investigation, um, House oversight members have requested a trove of documents. They're looking for things from cyber ninjas to determine if their goal is, as they put it, to, quote, reverse the result of a free and fair election for partisan gain. So some of the documents that they want include communications that cyber ninjas may have had directly with Donald Trump or any of his allies. And they've given Cyber Ninjas until July 28th to hand anything over that they have requested. So again, I'll keep you guys posted on all of these matters, all of these legal challenges. But in addition to all of this, the Arizona scam leader, Karen Fan, is now saying that the ballot count reported by Cyber Ninjas doesn't match the count reported by Maricopa County. Wow, who could have seen that coming? No shit, Sherlock. Perhaps if Fan hadn't been so busy on the phone or emailing Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump, maybe if she was paying attention to people with actual experience and expertise in election audits, maybe this wouldn't be news to her. 
<laughs> so if you're watching on YouTube right now, you can see an article titled Election Consultants, colon, results of Arizona recount will be inaccurate at worst, incomplete at best. Now that article was published in the Arizona Central News website on July 6th, way before any of this was brought up by Karen Fan. Anyone with functioning brain cells who's been watching this slow moving train wreck could have predicted, even if you didn't know anything, they could have predicted there would be discrepancies. Why? Well, I've talked about a lot of them on the show, but you know, this may explain it. Check this out. Check out this video of untrained, inexperienced volunteers and employees attempting to count ballots at this Arizona fraud. <laughs> Okay, you caught me. <laughs> Those weren't election fraud at volunteers or employees. That was the chocolate factory scene from I Love Lucy. But according to witnesses, that's exactly what the volunteers and employees were doing, essentially. They had the ballots at one point on what they described as lazy Susan style turntables. And they were flying by them so fast that people said there's no way they could have seen what was on them. They said that each of the workers at these tables had only a second or two to look at each ballot before it flew by. And as they were looking at them, they had to record three different items. So first they had to check off that yes, I did in fact look at the ballot. The second item they had to mark off was who the voter chose for president. So it's not like they're just counting ballots as they're flying by. They had to mark these things down. And then the third thing they had to mark down was who the voter chose for the Senate. How do you see and accurately mark all of that down in one to two seconds? Understand, one to two seconds is one. <laughs> One, two, that's it. <laughs> so witnesses also complained about how they were frequently changing their processes. They said that workers were given half-assed instructions to begin with on how to conduct some of these portions of the so-called audit because none of this was normal. And then they'd change everything. So midstream, they'd just change things up and then they'd tell them, oh no, you have to do it completely different. Now, one of the changes they made, I will say, was for the better. So it may have reduced the potential for human error at each of these tables. So what I'm referring to is at these tables where there were these three people sitting around, these ballots were whipping by them with one to two seconds. They, like I said, they had three people taking down these notes, marking down these three items that I mentioned. If all three people at the table wrote down the same thing for each of the three items, they moved on to another batch. It was all good. If, however, of the three people at the table, they all had different results, then the ballots were recounted by those same three people at the table. So again, possibly good, I guess. But if two out of the three had matching results, and then a third person's count was off by only one or two results. So let's say, you know, the, yes, I saw it. Okay, that matches. <laughs> but then let's say like their president choice differed from the other two people at the table. The manager of the table would just accept the results that were listed by the two who agreed, and they would just move on. Seriously? Oh, gee, what could go wrong there? So luckily, that process changed because remember, I told you guys on the show that Wake TSI quit. They were like, I'm out of here. This is too much heat. This is getting way too much press. So they quit a while back. 
And then a company called Strack Tech Solutions took over for their remainder of the hand recount. Well, after Strat Tech got involved in this whole thing, they changed that process. So if one of the three people at the table had a different result, if they didn't match the other two, then the table manager was required to review their tally sheets and try to figure out why. Now, if that yielded no results and the table manager still couldn't figure it out, then they would refer back to the actual voters' ballots for an accurate count. So obviously, that's what they should have been doing from the beginning, which even some experts say that's not enough. But the damage is already done, right? I mean, all of the indiscrepancies that were just accepted as factual results when Wake TSI was handling that part that's going to be included in these final results. So this is why even Republican election experts have said this was going to be a shit show from the beginning. For example, Benny White, this is a Republican elections consultant, and he actually lives in the state. He lives in Arizona, and for more than a decade, White has taken part in election audits, not just in Arizona, but throughout the country. And when he was asked about the likelihood that this fraud would be accurate, White said that there was, quote, a 0% chance. So he also said that the companies conducting this fraud, like Cyber Ninjas and so forth, it, my word, not his, he didn't call it a fraud, but he said that they, quote, chose the least credible way to count this number of ballots and the votes on the ballots. In fact, White has been conducting his own audit, his own analysis. He worked with a team of people and he con conducted this analysis of the county's voting records. And what he and his team discovered is that no, Biden actually won, and the reason is disaffected Republicans. They handed the election in Arizona to Biden. So White believes that cyber ninjas, quote, started down the wrong path because of a lack of experience and couldn't recover. And additional election experts say that there should have been teams of two people reviewing each individual ballot at the same time. And then together, those two people would come to a consensus simultaneously as to how each vote was cast. So they say that's how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to have one ballot, two people looking at it at the same time. They both agree on what was marked off, and then you move on to the next one. They also say that we're counting way too many ballots in each batch and at the same time that you like you have to take a break. I'm assuming it's because like your eyes would glaze over, right? I mean, you're looking at all of these little boxes and check marks or squares filled in or whatever. You need a break. Um, and even in advance of this article being published on January 6th, Jennifer Morell, she's a partner with a national election consulting organization called the Elections Group. She told the Arizona Cent uh, Central that contractors weren't going to be able to cite the reasons why there were discrepancies as compared to Maricopa County's numbers. She, she, she already called it. She said, yeah, there's going to be discrepancies and they're not going to be able to explain why because they've, they've done things so shoddily. So she said that she hoped that people understood beforehand and expected that the ballot counts were going to be different. She blamed their mismanagement, their frequent changes, like I talked about, lack of quality control. And she told Arizona Central, quote, this was a group of inexperienced individuals with no planning, no expertise, and changing practices. And she went on to say, of course the numbers don't match. This is why the whole endeavor has been so alarming and dangerous. And Morell is not a partisan actor. She's consulted with election officials and in elections with both Republicans and Democrats in, in various states. And she's also acted as, as an observer in this Arizona fraud. And she says that 
one of her concerns when she was there watching over this process was that the people working at these tables, so these tables of three, no one was watching them, you know? So as they're watching these, these ballots zip by on a lazy Susan, nobody was overseeing or monitoring them. And so she raised that concern with cyber ninjas who had already said, oh yeah, we can't guarantee that you're gonna have people from both parties at the table. So you could have a table of all three Trump supporters and they all go, "Mm, okay, let's, you know what to do. You know, every one out of 10 will say Biden won. How hard would that be for them to do? And so what happened was after she complained about that, cyber ninjas added a camera above the table to keep an eye on what people were doing. But she said that that was only temporary. They only did it for a short period of time and then they just stopped. And then another observer said that the people who were responsible for taking these these tallies, taking these documents from the people that were watching these ballots go by in a lazy Susan, and the, the people who were responsible for taking those tallies and entering them into their computer system, She said that they were still using apparently red and green pens, which is what the people at the tables were using. So obviously they could use those pens to change the tallies. They could change the numbers on those, on that paperwork, right? How easy would it be to change that and then just enter a different total? Now, A spokesperson for Cyber Ninjas, a man named Rob Thompson, says that critics of the fraud it are being unfair. He says they're being unfair in their critique because no one has conducted this type of audit before. (laughs) Yeah, we know. There's a reason for that. (laughs) There's a reason it's not done like this. No one has been this ignorant. No one has been this gullible before, or maybe it's more like no one's been more craven and power hungry before, but no one would have ever believed that so-called leaders in the Senate would be stupid or self-serving enough to believe and go along with, oh, there's ballots that were flown in from China, so we have to look for bamboo. Yeah, yeah, that's never been done before. No one has ever clowned themselves in that way before. (laughs) I think you're right. (laughs) Oh my gosh. But so many others want to get in the clown car. So many others around the country. This is what we might be looking at in other states, people from all over the country, Trump sycophants from all over the country who just can't admit that he's a loser, so he lost, because losers lose. They want to do the same thing. So, coming to a town near you. (laughs) Your own fraud it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. Like I said, please become a supporter or a friend of the show if you can. Go down in the description box and click on the link. Thanks again for watching. Take care, and I'll talk with you soon. 